Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Good morning. It's nice to see everyone today on this beautiful, beautiful morning. Let us worship the Lord. Thank you for the wonderful music. Please stand if you're able. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Let us all sing number 409 together.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful, washes us clean. With one heart and voice, let us pray a prayer of confession. Creator of the universe, casualty of our sin, breath of life, we come trembling before you, for we have boarded and harbored what has never been ours in the hope of securing our future. We have yearned for wealth more than we have yearned for you. We have scoffed your trust and grieved your heart with our betrayal. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Amen. Beloved of God, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. It cannot be contained and must be poured out. Nothing you have done, nothing you will ever do is enough to separate you from the love of God made known in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please share the signs of peace with those around you. Pray with me the prayer of illumination. God of life, by the power of your spirit, come to us now. Plow our hearts with your living word until we who are broken become fertile with your love. For we long to bear fruit in a world that is wasting. We pray in the name of Jesus, whose charge we bear. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Joel. That's in the New Testament. And it's somewhere after Isaiah and before um, Matthew. So if if you can't find that, just uh, please try to follow along with me. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Pethuel. Hear this, you elders. Listen, all who lived in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locusts have eaten. What the great locusts have left, the young locusts have eaten. What the young locusts have left, other locusts have eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you drinkers of wine. Wail because of the new wine, for it has been snatched from your lips. A nation has invaded my land, a mighty army without number. It has the teeth of a lion and the fangs of a lioness. It has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. Mourn like a virgin in sackcloth, grieving for the betrothed of her youth. Grain offerings and drink offerings are cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests are in mourning, those who minister before the Lord. The fields are ruined, the ground is dried up. The grain is destroyed, the new wine is dried up, the olive oil fails. 
Despair, you farmers, wail, you vine growers, grief for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The wine is dried up, and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree, all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. Now on a more positive note, Romans 16, 16 through 20 provides, greet one another with a holy kiss, all the churches of Christ send greetings. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience. So I rejoice because of you, but I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent and what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What beautiful, perfect sound. Wow, thank you so very much. What talent. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of James, chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. In this passage, we are told that our lives should be governed by kindness and love, 
And it can't happen if we speak unfavorably about people. So James encourages us to submit ourselves to, to God and follow the path that he has for our lives. Let us listen to the word of the Lord. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers and sisters. Whoever speaks evil against another or judges another speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver and judge who is able to save and destroy, so who then are you to judge your neighbor? This is the word of the Lord. The Hocking County Fair 2022 is in the books or on the books, whatever they say. It is over, and they had a wonderful week last week. John and I were there on Thursday, and it was a beautiful day and lots of vendors and lots of people. The mother of a friend of mine has entered her baked goods in the fair for just for years and years. She is now not able to do it, but she did it probably for 40 years and won many of those beautiful little blue ribbons and she even has some of the great big best of show, where you're the best of the best. I always thought it would be so neat to win a best of show ribbon. I don't know how to do anything to do that, but I always thought, gee, what an honor to have one of those or two of those best of shows in my house. My son David was in fifth grade when we moved down here, and we quickly met Nancy and Vic Vermillion, some some of you, I'm sure, know them. And before long, the kids were in 4-H and we had sheep. I'm coming from the city, but we had sheep. And you think sheep aren't very smart? Well, let me tell you this. They taught us a lot. And in September, David was showing his sheep. Five people came in and stood in the arena. And I said to my husband, is he in first place or last place? And he said, I don't have a clue. And don't you know that David won best of show for beginner showmanship, and he has a trophy this size that I'm sure he still has it sitting someplace in his home today, and that was so much fun. Well, winning a ribbon or trophy is the fun part of the competition. The judging is the other part. The judges have to follow rules. They have to obey certain criteria. They have to be fair to everyone and certainly get it done in a timely manner. It's a responsible job, and in these instances, can be a lot of fun as you see the pride that people take in their animals, their baked goods, their crafts. It's just, it's just a good time. But there are times when we judge each other, and we are harsh and unkind with our words and our actions. We judge to make ourselves feel better to elevate ourselves. But God judges to make us more obedient to him, more in line with the lives that he has for us. Some people say that we should never judge one another. Well, while Jesus was in the temple courts, the Pharisees brought in a woman who was caught in adultery. They told Jesus what she had done, and they said to him, Now Moses in the law commanded us that we should, that such should be stoned, that this woman should be stoned. And they turned to Jesus and they said, but what do you say? Well, he didn't say anything for a while. He just sat and was writing something in the sand. And finally he looked up and he said, let he who has never sinned cast the first stone. And slowly the men dropped their stones and walked away. Jesus didn't say, don't judge. 
He says, if you're going to judge somebody by really high standards, make sure you judge yourself first by those really high standards. And when you judge, do it with kindness and love in your heart. Corinth was a prominent city, rich, immoral. The people did what they wanted. There was very little self-control. So you know what? It was the perfect place for Paul to come and start a church. And he did. For a year and a half, he worked with the people and taught them what Jesus wanted them to know, how they should take care of one another, look out for one another, humble themselves, not always think of themselves first. And after a year and a half, he moved on to Ephesus. Well, it wasn't long before he got word from the church in Corinth that there were problems. Scandalous sex in the church. It seems like one of the members was having sex with his stepmother. And if that's not bad enough, he wasn't even ashamed of people knowing. And the congregation wasn't ashamed or embarrassed. In fact, they were being very tolerant and loving of him, thinking that's what Paul had taught them. Well, they were pretty surprised when Paul, in his letter, was angry and in essence said, What in the world are you doing? This man is contaminating the whole church. Get him out. He wanted them to take this man out of the church and again teach him what Jesus wanted him to learn about respecting others and respecting himself and obeying the commandments. And he said, after this man has repented and asked for forgiveness of sins, then bring him back into the church. He said it might be totally devastating to him and embarrassing to the church, but better that than damnation. You want him on his feet and forgiven on the day of judgment. In the book of Deuteronomy, God has a list of blessings on obedience, the wonderful things that will happen to us if we're obedient. And, of course, for the Israelites, they would have lush gardens and vineyards. They would have harmony in the families, and everything would go perfectly because God has all of these blessings for them. On the other hand, there's a long list of curses on disobedience. You know, drought and famine and meager living and discontent and unhappiness and plagues. He told them there would be plagues for disobedience. Well, in our scripture lesson that Rick read this morning, that he said, let's go to a happier time, the one before that in Joel. He was telling the people that if they didn't repent and change their ways right now, that God would bring judgment on them. And they were shocked. Now, they knew that God was going to bring judgment on you or me or the, he the Jebusites or the Hittites or all of the ites on pagans, but not on them. They were the chosen people, descendants of Abraham. They knew they would never face judgment. So what a shock when he said that what you just had here, where they destroyed everything outside and inside their homes, that's just a tiny foretaste of what's going to come for you on the day of judgment if you don't change now. This story is from, a, from an unnamed source, and it tells of a Christian judgment day. This tells of our judgment day. Those of us who have given our hearts to the Lord, who love the Lord, accepted him as our Lord and Savior, and believe in the resurrection, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, he was buried three days later, he rose from the dead, and he lives today. And his one purpose is sending his son, Jesus Christ, to us, was to save us, that we might be in eternity with him. This message is for us. After living a decent life, my time on earth came to an end. The first thing I remember is sitting on a bench in the waiting room of what I thought would, was the courthouse. The doors opened, and I was instructed to come in and have a seat by the defense table. As I looked around, I saw the prosecutor, an evil, villainous-looking man. I sat down and looked to my left where my lawyer, a kind and gentleman, sat. 
The door flew open and there was the judge in full flowing robes. He commanded an awesome presence as he moved across the room and I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He sat down and said, let us begin. The prosecutor rose and said, my name is Satan and I'm here to tell you why this man belongs in hell. He proceeded to tell of lies that I had told, things that I stole, and when I cheated other people. He told of horrible perversions that were once part of my life, and the more he spoke, the further down in my seat I sank. I was so embarrassed that I couldn't look at anyone, as the devil told of sins that I had completely forgotten about. I looked at my lawyer, pleading with my eyes for him to say or do something, thinking I certainly had done one good little thing in my life. But he just sat there, silently. Finally, it was his turn, and my lawyer asked if he might approach the bench. The judge allowed this over the strong objection of Satan and beckoned him to come forward. As he got up and started walking, I was able to see him in his full splendor and majesty, and I recognized him. This was Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and he was representing me. He stopped at the bench and softly said to the judge, Hi, Dad. And then he turned and addressed the court. Satan was correct in saying this man had sinned. I will not deny any of those allegations. And yes, the wages of sin is death, and he deserves to be punished. However, I died on the cross so that this person might have eternal life, and he is mine. The judge lifted his hand and slammed down the gavel, and the following words bellowed from his lips. This man is free. The penalty has been paid in full. Case dismissed. As we stand before Jesus on that day, we will finally understand his grace and his great sacrifice. We will be clothed in his righteousness and forgiven of every single sin as we grasp how high and deep and wide wide and long is the love of Jesus Christ for each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a time for our prayers of concern and praise for one another, and I know Martha had some good news about Bob. He got his stitches out, and some healing is taking place, and it's been a long time, and sometimes that patience runs thin, so that's an absolute praise. Willis. And that's absolutely what the church is all about, to be there in support and love when people are down. Yes. There were a lot of people on our prayer list. I was checking our newsletter this morning. We want to pray for all of those people, for school children, for anyone recovering from COVID or affected by COVID, just so many people, for our first responders, military, People around our community, road workers who keep things open and going, that we just sort of take for granted. But there are so many people around making our lives a little bit easier. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we praise you and thank you for all you are and all you have done and all you will be doing in our lives. And you're doing everything. Without you, we're in nothing. We wouldn't even be here. 
And we just thank you that we all had the ability to get up and come here this morning to worship you and learn more about you. You are such an awesome God, Heavenly Father, always loving and pulling us closer to you, wanting to love us. You did it with the Israelites, warning them over and over again what would happen. And then you showed them what would happen, but not without plenty of warning. We know that you have so much love for each one of us that you just want us to thrive and prosper so that you can bless us. And sometimes we got off path, God, but thank you for always being there, luring us back. I always feel, feel you saying, come on, Gail, you're going in the wrong direction. Let's turn it around. And I just love you and thank you for that. Dear Lord, you know, cancer is such an awful thing today for us. And many of us have been affected by it. And right now, one of our members is really down. We ask you to lift up Keith and Lev and Rachel and the family and just be with them and hold them tight and bring healing to them. Touch his body, God, and just heal his whole body. That whatever needs to be done with his kidney and the cancer that you will do, that you will guide the doctors and they will do it. That he might one day be up and around. He's been such a faithful member of the church and child of yours for as long as I've known him. And I just pray that this will be just a stepping stone for him and that he will have many, many years to enjoy grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Just heal him, God. We thank you for the, the healing that's going on with Kelly, with Kelly Holrich, who seems to be out and around and feeling good, although the cancer is still in her body. But thank you for that. Thank you for her. She is such a gift to her family and to the school. And we just pray that that healing continues in her. We thank you for Bob's healing. He's waited a long time, God. I know it seems a long time to us. To you, it was like a second. But you know, patience isn't one of our strong suits. I know you know that, God. So just thank you for bringing this about. And I just, I pray that his sight gets better and better, that it can be to a point where he was before it got so serious. And I thank you for Martha. And she's right there loving and encouraging him, and sometimes it's hard. Because we never know when there's going to be a change or any healing. But we do just have to have, to have faith in you because you always have something good in store for us. We thank you for being in the future, already setting things up for us, God, that one day when we're there, it'll all, all be ready. Why do we worry when we have you on our team looking out for us day by day? I can't answer that. I ask you to be with all of our first responders and doctors and nurses, medical people, people in the community, if kept our city going and all over the country. Thank you for military who keeps us safe. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that state and local and national leaders would be able to work together for the betterment of all of us. Sometimes it seems impossible to us, but nothing is impossible for you. And so we ask this, Heavenly Father, in your name. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, dear God, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we thank you so much for all of the gifts that have been given this morning in your name. And we ask that these gifts be used throughout our community and the state and the world, that one day all knees will bow and all tongues confessed that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord and Savior of all. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Before the benediction, I have just a few announcements. Next week, we will be meeting outside. We're going to have a bagpiper, Master Scott Caputo. And so bring your lawn chairs and have a wonderful service. The Bowen House. The Bell Choir and Chancel Choir will begin rehearsals this Wednesday, September 21st. Bell Choir, 6.30. Chancel Choir, 7.30. Everyone is welcome. We are looking forward to an exciting year with music opportunities for both returning and new members. We have lots of new chairs. We just need lots of new people. Come and sing. Uh, six o'clock next Sunday, we're gonna have movie night. We're gonna start studying The Chosen, which is a great series uh, on Jesus' life from when he started picking his disciples uh, on through. They have two seasons uh, recorded so far. We're going to study the first season, so it's an eight-week series. Uh, they're going to plan on making about nine seasons, I think. But they have two done, and it's all uh, funded through the general public. It's not anything else. So it's, it's a great series. You'll learn a lot. It's very impactful. I've gone through, through it once with another group. studying it as a group or as a church. So next Sunday at 6 in Westminster. Good. That sounds great. Thank you. Any other announcements? There's surprise. We're going to have refreshments in Westminster. <laughs> May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.